So, Prayer of the Sounds yes. is the topic. The jungle is alive with the sound of screaming. Yes, beautiful screams, really. I mean, impeccable. <laughs> Impe impeccable dying. Um, so, you want to start it? Yeah. Um, there's two parts to the soundscape. First of all, the soundtrack, yeah. which um, in the original Predator is composed by Alan Silvestri and it's a very 80s kind of soundtrack. And I think we made the mistake of not actually listening to the new Predator soundtrack. I don't think if it was even available. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. But, but much, I think that even though the original Predator soundtrack is dated in modern terms, I think it's, it has to be more memorable. Mm. Because I remember the if I heard that soundtrack, I yeah. remember what it's what, what it was from. Um, there's there's an element in the original soundtrack as well of Silvestri composed a lot of 80s action movie mm. soundtracks, and there's a certain thing about the 80s. Movie, I mean, because it was such a time of these these um, there aren't really that many action heroes anymore. No. Not really. In, in a way. And the 80s was full of them, and mm. it was full of this testosterone, it was full, no. full of this masculinity, and Bring so on. Bring back the testosterone, <laughs> dudes. <laughs> yeah, but that, that sort of synth aesthetic mm. fit that period really yeah, well. Yeah. And it, it's a lot of this kind of, um, I don't know what they call it in English, but there's this term in Finnish called nostatus, which is just, you it's know. It's just hype, hyping something. Yeah, just, just yeah like something, building. something building up yeah, on, yeah. Con constantly. Yeah. And that was an element mm. in the in the 80s soundtrack. No. Um, and that was, in a way, that's one of the reasons why the soundscape in the original movie, I thought, was sort of a character of its own. Mm. If, the, if, if the jungle was a character no. slash the predator is the, is, is the character, and then there's this group of human characters mm. that definitely the soundscape is, is, a, is a third one. No, it's sort of like the sounds that the god who is watching this mighty combat <laughs> is making. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but it's a really, really uh, significant part of the original movie that was sort of overlooked, I think, mm. in The Predator. Yeah, it was. Because there was a few moments when I noticed that they were using the old sounds and it gave me goosebumps. Because it's such a trip back to the original movie that it sort of, it gives you like this tiny taste. <laughs> I'm just reminded of the courtroom wrecking for a dream. <laughs> I'm not addicted to heroin. No, no, you just like the taste. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the taste of the first movie and it sort of brings up the, the emotional response to the first movie, which is sort of like a, like a me memoritic, like a memory emotion or a yeah. memory of an emotion. Yeah. And it's really nice to have those. Yeah. Yeah, that works really well with sounds and it works really well with smells as yeah, well. Yeah. Much, much more powerfully than with sight. Because mm. uh, I, I mean, I can still remember what my boyhood homes cellar smelled like. Mm. And if I get that similar kind of smell, yeah. it takes me, immediately takes me back. And with these sounds as well, if I hear the clicking sound of the predator, mm. Um, and it, it's, it just immediately transports me back. Yeah. Um, and, and the sound design in the original Predator, which was used in, a bit in, in the Predator as well and in all the sequels, because it's, yeah. it, there's, there's definitely some really, really brilliant sound engineering mm. things there. There's the, there's the clicking sound mm. that comes from the... I suppose it's the predator's mandibles, or it's, no. it's something within mm. the predator, predator, something within mm. that creature that makes that that sort of clicking no. sound. And then there's all the technological sounds, like the zooming in no, or, in really the thermal cool. vision, no. the no. Voom, voom, no. Voom. and and there's and then the, on top of that there's the there's the music which changes, like the jungle drums mm. in the or, original one, which is which is also a really, really powerful sort of 
connection to yeah, the memory really is, of, yeah. of seeing that film for the first time. And um, when I was uh, searching for the sounds for the sounds of Predator, the movie, and um, I was like, um, I found this clip where the Predator is looking at his own hand, and there's this all all these sounds are going through the scene, and it's sort of like playing back these sounds of humans in a slightly altered mode, and just all the sounds give it a really eerie sort of alien kind of a vibe to it, and it's sort of. A, from that, you, it's sort of like a predator looking into a mirror, and it's really disturbing. I mean, still, it was. I was like, sort of like, oh shit, that's scary, because it's. Uh, and I think that is one thing that they have sort of not used in the further predator movies. Yeah, that he is really this sort of like. Um, when you think about the phrase, the jungle came alive and took him, that is something really mythical. Sort of, it's it's, it's like a demon. Yeah. And it's coming there. It's like a space fucking demon, dude. <laughs> so I think that's the problem, uh, because it's a it's a really good concept, but how they use it in the sequels is a problem, I think. Yeah, I wonder if that's one of the things as well that that's why the original works so well because the jungle is sort of, I mean, they tried that in Predators as well, mm. but I guess that's one of the reasons that the jungle itself is such a natural habitat for, habitat for, humans, for yeah. our fears yeah. in terms of there being some kind All of hunter of predators, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and and you never basically know if if that if behind that leaf there's mm. a poisonous snake yeah. or whatever there is and, and and i think that's one of the reasons that it works so well i recently played um, on xbox i played the game uh, ghost recon wildlands which mm. is based on the Tom Clancy no novels that it's basically a series of games of of small groups of elite forces doing something yeah. just trying to defuse a terrorist situation or free a city in this particular one it's about the drug war in southern america and it happens in bolivia mm. and it's just a basic you know you try to mm, combat the the, the cartels mm. and clear areas of them and and then last christmas they added a bonus mission hmm. and it was the predator in yeah. the jungle and every time you go into the area where the predator is hmm. those those drums <laughs> yeah. start playing on the soundtrack and every time you tense up yeah. and you sort of immediately transport it mm. like you said it's an immediate transportation back into yeah. that time and you and and the sound is so effective that you actually playing it i sort of tried to avoid that area yeah. just because when that sound kicks in, mm. I know I'm, try I'm <laughs> in yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think, and it's the thing that I'm sort of also interested is that um, interested in is that um, how do you create those emotions in the first place? Yeah. Because when you are first seeing, let's say, uh, this movie Predator, the first one. So how did they do it? How did they create a soundscape that is so effective that it stays with you all this time? Yeah. Because a lot like, like Blade Runner is a good example also. That yeah. has a really effective soundscape to it. Yeah. You sort of remember it still. And um, Yeah, and, and the echoes from the original Blade Runner work much better in the sequel yeah. than with the Predator yeah. sequels. Because there, the composer and the sound engineer, they really understood mm. in a way how significant yeah. that bo bond to the original movie is and and there's there isn't that much like in blade runner 2049 there isn't that much references to the original soundtracks there's a few key mm. moments where that yeah. comes in but yet you still sort of you kind of understand know that you're in the same, same yeah. yeah same world and i wonder if it's sort of like this they use some sort of <laughs> same sort of notes or melodies or something that is sort of similar that it's in the same yeah. sound spheres in a way yeah i guess that i guess that they are sort of crafting it around like a specific you get a specific vangelis mm. melody from the first one yeah. and then you start building and yeah, you may yeah, change yeah. you may change that completely yeah. but it, it if you some, yeah, yeah if you ha if you're able to sort of maintain that thread true um, i think that's the pro that's the problem when you because um i think that's the way every movie should be approached yeah like as a piece of art that you're sort of 
really truly trying to do the original piece justice and it's weird that so many movies really don't do that yeah maybe they don't have the time or the resources i, I think the um blade runner sequel is a movie that basically had all the resources available yeah. that you could get so yeah. yeah yeah that's true and and i think that it's just that maybe maybe some directors are sort of they don't realize or they're mm. not musically inclined That's or true. something Could like be, that yeah. um but especially in like horror mm. sound is really really yeah. important and i think in action as well yeah. i mean if you watch like um you've probably seen heat yeah uh the anytime basically michael mann does a movie and there's a shootout mm. You're really, really in that yeah. shootout because the soundscape is so brutal. Mm. The, the the harsh sounds of yeah. the m machine gun fire and so on, they w just work so much more effectively than they do in a lot of other. That's true. In a, lo a lot of other action movies, mm. and and I think that's because man understands. Again, he understands so well how important it is to find the right sound. True. Not, then there's the other end, like um, George Lucas, mm. who's really, really good at sound. Mm. I mean, you hear the sound of a, 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 a lightsaber yeah. anywhere, and you're, you'll get that. It's if, probably yeah. one of the most iconic sounds yeah. ever. Yeah, but, but he's so obsessed with sound. He's such an engineer mm. type of person that then he forgets a lot of the other yeah. stuff. For example, like in, in, in Phantom Menace or the, the basically the first, the first three <laughs> uh, Star Wars movies, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the sounds within those movies are really, really good. Mm. But then there's a lot of other stuff that just gets swept under yeah. the rug and that's why they're not universally <laughs> regarded as masterpieces. <laughs> <laughs> But but yeah, it's, uh, I think it's um, if you're interested in sort of sound design, I, you can start off by just going to YouTube and and like putting in search words like predator sounds mm. and stuff like that because it's really really interesting. You realize how much of that you don't even need to see the film, no. and then you remember key scenes just based on sound effects, just single sound effects. And I think this will work in pro probably a lot of movies. And, and, and we were just talking about how that we've also sort of overlooked mm, have, this aspect. Yeah. Um, and we'll probably have to ma pay more attention to yeah. it from now on. We were talking about, uh, we talked about the ringtone, or what was it that you had earlier? Yeah. Which was from the movie Sunshine. Yeah, the Distress Beacon. Yeah. Icarus <laughs> 1. It's a, it's a really, really freaky sound. And uh, not, not a lot of you may have heard it because Sunshine was not really a big hit, but it is a really, really, it, it's enough of a strange sound that when I had that as a ringtone, I had, I had like people who said that, would you mind just turning that off because it's so <laughs> distracting. <laughs> and, and, but but it, it, it is um, a, a really well-made sound effect mm. makes all the difference yeah, it does. In, in a certain scene. Um, and and for example, with with the Predator, I don't think that it would have been a great movie even if it had good sound mm, design. That's true. But I think that they dropped the ball in a oh, way yeah. on that as well. Yeah, on pretty much everything. <laughs> it's sad. And the funny uh, funny thing about sound is, I was thinking about it the other day that uh, young people usually um, generate a part of their identity through sound, which is through music. And these different types of music, and because I'm an old fart, I don't quite understand it anymore. Even though I have done the same thing myself when I was a younger, younger man, so um, it's funny. Yeah. Because I don't really get it anymore. How can sound be so important, or sound of a music, or sound of a band, that it sort of becomes a part of your identity? I, but the point that I was making is that sound apparently does really have this quality to. Um, to give you a really strong sense of something or yeah. an experience, basically. Yeah. yeah.
I think we're done. Yeah. Keep listening. It's so cordy. It's so goddamn cordy. <laughs> Excellent, young sir. <laughs>